Welcome, Tiffin friends. Uh, we've got a special guest here on campus today. He was the speaker at Good Morning World this morning, and it's my pleasure to have with us here on the campus of Tiffin University, Anthony Iani. And uh, Anthony, uh, what a what a great presentation this morning, a very motivational presentation you gave this morning to a good group of people here in Tiffin. And you overcame a lot. You, you have autism. You played Division One basketball in Michigan State the first person to play division one basketball with autism. Let's talk about the start when, when you found out when your parents found out because they found out before you did kind of the, 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 the gloomy, uh, future for you. And, and you turned it around. Talk about that first. Yeah. Well, in 1993, when I was four years old, that's when I was diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder, which is a type of autism. And, um, and that was when I was living in Athens, Ohio. So, you know, I'm very happy to be back in my home state, if you will. Um, and then we moved to East Lansing. My dad took a job in the athletic department at Michigan State. And uh, when I was five years old um, in my elementary school, they had an IEP meeting for me. And they had doctors and psychiatrists there, and they told my parents that, you know, I have autism, so don't expect much from me. Don't expect for me to barely graduate high school. Don't expect me to graduate or go to college. And don't expect me to be an athlete. But expect me to be in a group home after high school whenever I graduate. And they didn't tell me that story until my freshman year of high school. So that kind of was like my motivation to prove those people and any other doubters and naysayers that have my life wrong. And, you know, I had a lot of support from family, friends, teachers, coaches, and teammates. And um, and I just worked really, really hard at what I did because um, the harder you work, the more you earn. And, you know, I ended up graduating from high school, was at Grand Valley State for a couple of years, and then I went back home to Michigan State, played there. And, you know, like you said, first NCAA Division One college basketball player to be diagnosed with autism. And you know, but I think the best part about it was when I graduated from Michigan State. You have to have the drive, obviously, yourself personally, but you also have to have a great support system. And, and clearly, you had that. Talk about your, your parents first, because you, you, you told a story about your dad had an opportunity to go to the University of Toledo. At least he was in the running to be the AD there. He did not do that. And I thought it was interesting why he pulled his name out of that, uh, out of that position. And, and, and it was because of you. Yeah, and, and my sister was just going into her senior year as well, and I think also that played a little bit of a factor as well. But he mainly told told my mom, and he told me when I got older that, you know, I had a great support system in Okemos, Michigan, and he felt like that it just wouldn't be right for us to move out of Toledo and, you know, or move out of Toledo, move to Toledo, and um, and just move me away from a great support system that's just done so much for me. And he knew that Okemos Public Schools was the place for me to be, and – you know, like I told people, for him to sacrifice his dream to help me out, it like I still owe my dad in so many ways so much because of what he did. And, you know, it, it just goes to show you that how important like family really is in your life and how your dreams aren't bigger than family. And then your mom, you told a great story about you're you're the youngest of two. You got a sister that's older, and uh, she said that you're her baby. And even at twenty, you know, in your in your twenties, she's calling you her baby. I'm the baby of my family too, and I, I understand what you're talking about. But explain why that was important in in those few words that she said. Um, basically, because you know, it just shows that how much she supported me and cared for me all my life, and. You know, like you said, I'm still maybe 25 years old, but to her, I'm still the young little Anthony Iani that runs around the house and says and does the craziest things as a five-year-old boy. And, you know, I remember telling her that I didn't want her to call me her baby ever again because it was embarrassing. And But my father told me that I was born, you know, as her baby, and that's a title I stick with for life. And whenever she calls me, you know, her baby, whenever I come home on the weekend for a Michigan State football game, it's it kind of just tickles me a little bit because it makes me realize that, you know what, I am her baby, and that's just something that's never going to change in my life. You transferred to Michigan State to play the last couple of years. You, you started uh, it at Grand Valley uh, and then went to Michigan State. And I was wondering in your, in your speech today how long you would go until you mentioned his name. <laughs> and you, you did, and then I, I, I everything I've heard about Tom Izzo has been great. You You – Talk more about that today and, and, again, just the great things that he did. Talk about what he did, not at the on the basketball court, but off about graduation, because that was a great story. Well, it's like I always to tell people, because I get questions all the time, you know, who is he, you know, what's he like? And I always say to people, he's the most intense coach you'll see on the court. I mean, you see it on the TV, and if you're ever at a practice, you'll see it. But off the court, he just cares so much about his players. And with me, like – 
you know, my uncle who passed away four years ago, and it was a tough time for me because it was my godparent. I kind of got my priorities in life really messed up. Um, you know, throughout my life, it was always faith, family, school, and basketball. But then after my uncle died, it was faith, family, basketball, and school because my teammates were kind of like my family as well. And so I had probably the worst year of my life in school. And I remember Coach just had a team meeting. We had a team meeting one night just to kind of go over the summer workouts and everything like that. And um, I remember he kind of um, called some guys out about their year in school, and I was one of them, and he wanted to talk to me afterwards. And I went in his office, and I just I just started crying. I just started breaking down. And, I'm, and I kept, and to this day, I look back and I go, I was crying in front of Coach Izzo. Like, what was wrong with me? But, you know, he could tell how emotional I was and how much I cared about the situation. And he said to me, you know, AI, you know, and that's why a lot of people call me AI. Those are my initials. He said, AI, you know, I know what you've been through your whole life. I know what people said about you when you're five years old. I mean, people have zero expectations for you to walk out of here as a Michigan State Spartan for life. He said, today is May 5th, 2011. He said, you have 365 days left as a Spartan. And I want you to walk out of here not, not just having the greatest experience of your life, but I want you to walk out of here with your good degree. I want you to prove people wrong. And he said, you know who the first person is going to be? you know, waiting for you to hug you after you walk across that stage. He said, it's going to be me. He said, I'll be there and I'm going to be the first one there waiting for you when you walk out the stage. So May, a year later, May 5th, 2012, I get my degree. I walk off the stage and who's the first guy waiting for me? It's him. And first guy to give me a hug, congratulate me and tell me how proud he was of me. And that moment right there just showed me, you know, the kind of person he is like off the court. And that's just the father figure that he really, really is for not just his current players, but for his past players and past coaches as well. What do you hate? There was a woman in the crowd today that had a question about uh, a, one of her children that has autism. What What is your message for parents that have children with autism? I mean, there's so many different versions or different, you know, different kinds of autism, I suppose. Um, so everybody's a little bit different. But what is your message to the parents of, of, of kids that have autism and, and the kids themselves? Uh, for the parents, you know, just never give up on your kids. You know, I know my parents were told all those things when I was five, and they could have easily just, you know, went with it and agreed with them, but they didn't, and because they believed in me. Um, so never give up on your kids. Always believe in them. And But more importantly, you got to be patient. Um, I know my parents, there were days where they weren't the most patient people with me, but they were because they knew that patience pays off. Um, so just be patient. You know, things are going to come. It may take time, but at the end of the day, you know, your kids will turn out the way you want them to and just keep supporting them no matter what and keep encouraging them. And for the kids, you know, you know, my slogan is LYD, live your dreams. You know, that's what I encourage every kid to do is live their dreams, and accomplish every goal that they have in life. And, you know, just remember that there are going to be days that people doubt you, but don't worry about that because that's the motivation you need. Just go work hard in everything you do because the harder you work, the more you earn. And remember, you have a lot of support and a lot of people behind you, whether it's friends, teammates, coaches, teachers, a family, you know, somebody's going to be there for you. And, you know, everybody does things in life because of hope and inspiration. And, you know, it's there when we go to sleep, when we wake up, it's in every single step we take in life and do what you love to do because you believe in yourself and you're not afraid to fail at it. Because if you believe in what you do and you're not afraid to fail at it, you know, it's going to build in the one thing and that's confidence. You will be the most confident person you are in life if you do that. And in closing, um, what what's next for you? I know that you you do these uh, these presentations, these speeches. You're a motivational speaker, and and certainly you motivated. I think the group of us today at Tiffin. Um, there's no question about that. Uh, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Um, well, obviously, you know, my obviously I'm going to be a father, so that's definitely next for me. Um, my son is due to be born February 14th, so I'm very excited about being a, a father and being a parent. Um, but as far as my career goes, um, you know, I like to tell people I want to try and be the best at what I do and try to be the best in the country, maybe in the world one day, and just keep working hard and doing what I'm doing. And you know, I've always told people, too, I've never closed the doors on a lot of things. Um, I've never closed the door on coaching. I know uh, Ron Schumacher was asking me about that today, and I never closed the door on that. Um, I know I've had a couple of university workers approach me saying, would I ever work at a university as a autism ambassador for kids with learning disabilities or kids with autism or just students in general and I've never closed the door on that so you know you never know what the future is going to hold but you know one thing is for sure you know nothing's for sure. <laughs>
Anthony Iani uh, here on the campus of Tiffin University. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it very much. And uh, what a pleasure to have him out here on campus. And again, here from Tiffin University, Jason Griffin saying goodbye for now.